Hello, I'm Calvin Morris. Now last week uh, I did a review of Doctor Who Deep Breath, the TV movie. Uh, even though it's a TV show, it was a TV movie and I thought it stood up to reason that I should review it. But since then, uh, a member of Let's Talk Movies, Paul Martin, asked me if I would continue to do Doctor Who reviews, even though it's a TV show and this is Let's Talk Movies. Still thought it was a good idea though, so Let's change this for a more appropriate setting. Different. But appropriate. So without any further ado, let's review Doctor Who. So yes, this is my review of Doctor Who Into the Dalek. Uh, where to begin? Well, let's start off with the plot, shall we? The plot features around the Doctor who is trapped on board a high security facility and is taken to meet a captured and damaged Dalek. Some of you are going to be getting flashbacks to an earlier Doctor Who episode here, and quite rightly so. Uh, it's very much along the lines of the episode Dalek starring Christopher Eccleston. Um, but there were some good moments and let's start off right at the beginning whereby we see a spaceship being pursued into an asteroid belt by a Dalek spaceship. Absolutely beautiful. Beautiful looking visual effects, really elevated the game, really action packed, really thrilling to start off with. TARDIS merges around uh, the soldier, Blue. Um, good little scene there where he's actually justifying or putting a positive spin on not being able to save her brother and in that he was able to save her. Lots of good stuff. Gets past the title sequence. Again we're introduced to the Dalek. He goes back to Earth, gets Clara, comes back and they go inside the Dalek. Now before we get to there, there was the whole scene between uh, the former Soldier Pink and Clara, who is, looks like there's a little bit of a love interest coming on there. Really great chemistry in that scene, really great stuff going on. Really like the, the fact that Clara really seems... I mean, Jenna Coleman, for a fact, has got her character down. I mean, she has just got it. She is knocking it out of the park every time. Uh, really like the chemistry that was going on between those two. There's clearly something happening. This is for a future date. Um, so yeah, I liked that a lot. I thought it was one of the best bits of the episode, in fact. Uh, we get to the whole bit where the Doctor is standing in front of the Dalek, and the Dalek is ranting about how all Daleks must die. Now, at this point in the episode, my expectations on the story were being really elevated. I thought there was some really good stuff going on here. It It kind of went in another direction that I wasn't expecting it to go. Um, the next bit that follows is a little bit of the Tesselect where the Doctor's getting shrunk down and they all, they, he, he and Clara and some soldiers go inside the Dalek. <sighs> Oof. Oof, I don't like the shrinky down stories. I really don't. It's not that I, th I think they're bad sci-fi, it's just the fact that there's, there's some other stuff that they could have done. There's some other stuff that could have been put into the script that could have made it more of a dramatic case. You know, it could have been a story about this Dalek being tried and being put to death and the Doctor having to defend it to save it. I think I would have preferred that. But, no, it is what it is and it's a, even though it's a little bit fantastic voyage, a little bit in a space. It's still, you know, it still tries. It's a good action-packed episode. I mean, there's lots of stuff going on. So the story isn't great. But the character building in this episode is fantastic. We get to see more of what the Doctor is going to be. What, what, the, what the Doctor is actually going to become. What his character and his nature really is. Uh, he's very dismissive of death. He's seen a lot of it, and that's to be understood. 
that he has gone through a time war, he's lived for a very, very long time, he's been surrounded by death ever since that we can remember him. So it's to be understood that he can be quite cold, and if that's what this doctor is going to be, then damn well good. I, I really enjoyed the fact that he didn't even try, in some cases, to save somebody. There was one particular scene where the soldier gets obliterated right in front of him, and he didn't even try to save him. He didn't even, you know, it was like, oh, he's dead already, never mind, let's move on. That seems like a very, very cold thing to do, but I liked it. I really liked it. I liked the fact that the Doctor wasn't, it wasn't that he wasn't going to save him, it was that he knew that he couldn't, and then just was cold, calculating, logical to the last, and just said, right, let's do that. I saved our lives, not his. So, yeah, I, there's some really great stuff going on there. And there's some really, if that's the Doctor that this is going to be, the one that realises that he can't do it all, and knows he can't do it all, I, I have no problems with that. Uh, further on in the episode then, we've got quite a bit of action going on, quite a bit of nice stuff going on. The Doctor has fixed the problem with the Dalek. Now here's my issue. Had this been a third Doctor story, he'd have popped the lid off the Dalek with his sonic screwdriver, got in there with the pliers and an arc welder and fixed the problem. That really probably would have been the way to do it as well. The problem with fixing the Dalek is that it seems that the Dalek reverted to its original self. This tends to suggest that the Dalek's morality was a technical fault and not a part of the Dalek. To have a the Dalek with a soul filter seemed to me to be a bad idea. Because if a technical fault like this can occur, you would imagine that there would be millions and millions of Daleks elsewhere in the universe, gone through a time war, You'd have thought another one would have got damaged with a similar fault and arrived at the same conclusion. Had this been a Dalek that had just come to the conclusion all by itself, that would have made it a really unique Dalek. That would have really made it the Dalek that differed from all the rest. That would have really made it special as it is, is a technical fault and something that you can turn on and off. I don't like that with the Daleks. Also, and I'm going to probably upset a few people here, but given that we're in our 50th year of Doctor Who, I think it's about time the Daleks had a makeover. In fact, I think it's about time that they went back to the drawing board and rethought what it is to be a Dalek. Now, I know that's going to upset a few people and say you can't change a dark Dalek, it's classic design and all this. Just hear me out. All the other Doctor Who villains that have re-emerged over the years have had a big makeover. The Cybermen, the Sontarans, uh, what else has popped back? Uh, what are they called? Silurians? Sea Devils? They've all had a makeover. And it's been fantastic. I mean, look how much the Cybermen have changed since the 10th planet to now. And have a look at how a Dalek's changed since the Daleks and now. It's not a great deal of difference. I mean there are some little bits of difference here and there but it's not really a dramatic change. It's still very much the slide your own pepper pot. I think it's about time that they actually rethought it and I'm not saying get rid of the Daleks that we have. I'm saying that there should be other Daleks out there. Walker Daleks, you know, um, Dalek spiders, Dalek scorpions. Just different varieties of Dalek, not just the same plain old tank. I, I think the other thing that is a problem with that is the fact that Daleks are really cumbersome and clunky. And even with today's technology where they introduce CGI Daleks, they're still a bit, you know, linear. You know, if you change the external Dalek to something that's a little bit more like the Squiddy from the Matrix, where it can move more fluid through the environment and is a bit more sharp on its movements, I think that would make them a little bit more terrifying. So I'm not saying get rid of the old design, I'm just saying let's see something new. Let's do something new with Doctor Who. You know, if you're going to change the Daleks, let's change them for something good. Change it for something that's a little bit more terrifying. So overall, I like the fact that the Doctor Who's questioning himself. I like the fact that he asks, am I a good man? And I even like Clara's response in saying, well, I don't know if you're a good man. But I know that you are trying and that's what counts. And that really is what counts.
So going forward then into the, the following series, I'm looking forward to it. I am looking forward to it. This story was an amalgamous episode where it, it took a piece from one story, piece of another story, piece of another story, put it together and gave us that. So the plot wasn't great, but the character building and character development of this episode was just sky high. I, I really loved it. Um, is this episode going to withstand repeat viewing? Probably not. Is it going to fall into a fan favourites? Probably not. But, my word has it done a lot for the characters in the episode of, of what we can expect from the characters. Um, so that, yeah, plot wise this episode is about a 6.5, character wise is about a 9 out of 10. That's really all I can say, except for the fact that they can clearly see in this series now that they have elevated the production values of the show. That's one of the other things I would say was absolutely great about this episode was you could honestly see an increase in the production values. It no longer looked like it was studio bound or just on location somewhere. It looked like they had really tried to build an environment and <clears throat> that I thought that was quite, quite impressive. So anyway, that's my review of Doctor Who.